Yo, what's up guys? Back again with another video in the Node.js and Express series. This episode, I'm going to show you how to retrieve data from the database and display it onto the page on the route, and also how to store games in the database with the routes also, okay? Alright guys, so like I said, we're going to be, um, you know, connecting to the database and then, you know, displaying the games that we have inside of the database on the page, okay? So that's something we've already done, sort of. We've, you know, we have this little mini database here where we have our games from, you know, two episodes ago. So what we did before is just retrieved these different objects and then displayed the objects one by one onto the list page, okay? So we're using the list route to do that, okay? But the difference is this time, of course, we're using the MongoDB, you know, database, right? So we need to retrieve the data from the MongoD database, MongoDB database as objects like we did here, and then display it onto the list page like we did here, just like before, okay? So it's not that different, except that we just have to take, take the data from a different source, right? So that's the only thing that's different with it. So we can actually even go ahead and, no, let's not delete it yet because we still need to add these extra ones to the database. So the first thing we want to do is actually delete these so we don't, you know, create a game and find a game every time we start up the application. That would be very annoying. So what we want to do here is go to our list page, of course. And so the first thing we need to do, obviously, if we're going to be listing a full list of all the games that we have on the, uh, on the database, is retrieving all of the games, right? Or all the game data, okay? So what we need to do is do game, you know, that's a reference to our uh, model here because we use the model to retrieve, edit, and uh, produce data into our database. So game.find, uh, okay? Then of course, if you want to find all of the um, documents in a collection, you just leave it empty, no parameters in there. And then you want to put a callback function, okay? And the callback function is going to have two things. You're going to have an error, and you're going to have a response. But we're just going to call it uh, game, or games, plural, okay? Because it's going to return multiple games, of course. And there we go, so then we're going to open that up. So once it does that, we want to check and see if there's an error, first of all, in case there is one. So if there's an error, we'll console.log, there was a problem retrieving all of the games from the database. Okay, cool. And then uh, we can go ahead and uh, print out that error, of course, so we know what exactly happened. And then else, if there's no error, of course, we want to actually list, or um, actually no, we don't want to, we're, um, usually we would, you know, like last episode, we'd just print out the data that we just retrieved, like games, but since we're trying to display it to the page, there's no point just printing it out, that's not going to provide any use to us. So what we can do is actually really cool, we can just copy this here, you know, this little piece of code that's going to render the list page and send data to the list page, let's just copy it and put it in here, okay, or cut it and put it in here. So what that's going to do, uh, primarily, it's just uh, find whenever we go to the list route, it's going to find all of the games in the game collection or the games collection, and then it's going to return those games to you. The um, you know array of objects is going to give that to you, and then you could take that array of objects and then send it to this list page here. And so we can send it right here. It's already sending it. So games, games, and this is the piece of data that we're retrieving on the end of the page here or on this page here. So if we go to list.ejs, you can see that we're retrieving games.list, okay, and that's exactly that's exactly what we're sending on uh, right here, right? So anyway, that's just going to do what we did before, but this time we're just retrieving the objects from the database, okay? So let's actually go ahead and test this out, see if it worked. So if we go to our page here, let's reload. Actually, we need to get Nodemon working. So Nodemon, just like that. And that'll start, uh, start it up for us and automatically reload, of course, whenever we edit stuff. There we go, looks good to me. So if we go ahead and reload here, it displays all of the games. That's awesome, right? It actually worked. It retrieved the four docu uh, documents that we have in our database. So if we go to our database right here, let's see here, we'll go to collections, we'll go to games, we can see that we have four documents here, and that's exactly what was displayed here. So likewise, if um, you want to see how dynamic this is, um, we don't have to change a piece of code, you know, to edit the page every time, right? So let's say um, you, you're not working with Node.js and Express and MongoDB, right? You're working with a simple static web page like HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, maybe, okay? So um, normally you would have to actually change the, uh, if you go to here, normally we'd have to go in here and then change these titles one by one and if we want to change it to something else, right? We'd actually have to change the actual code, okay? But instead, since it's so dynamic, we're actually um, 
we don't have to change anything, right? We just have to change the entries in the database, okay? And so every time this page is reloaded, it's taking whatever data is in the database, okay? So the code never has to be changed ever, okay? Unless, of course, we want to change the layout of the page itself, right? As a template, right? But hopefully you see how magical that is. So what we're going to do here real quick is just uh, prove that and change the second document here. So we're going to change it to uh, big booty, because booty, why not? And so we'll go ahead and save that. Now if we reload here, we, you know, we saved our document here. So if we reload here, it's going to say big booty, right? So now I retrieved that piece of data from the database and it's just magical, okay? So I really like that. Hopefully you like that too. So that's really cool. And so now um, let's go ahead and delete these extra ones here. We don't need the, the, there's only one of this game, right? There's only one of these games, right? We can't have four of the same game. That doesn't even make sense. So let's just delete, uh, delete the extra ones because we don't need them. And let's go ahead and... Um, and so now um, that we have this first game here, we can add other games, of course, by, you know, um, calling upon the uh, create method here. But we don't want to do it here, right? We want to we don't want to do it out here or here. We actually want to do it at the add game route, of course, because at the at the add game route, what we were doing before is actually adding data to our little array here, except it wouldn't save, right? But now whenever we go to the add game route and then submit our form, it's going to actually be able to save that data to our um you know our database that's going to be really cool so let's try and adding that uh, adding that functionality you know so the first thing it's doing here as you can see here is just uh, retrieving the data that was sent from the form the body of the form which is going to be let's find the form here let's go to add game so it's going to be sending each of these individual pieces of data the name creator size file name and thumbnail file it's sending all that data and then we're pushing it um, as an object into the games array of course okay but we're not using this anymore so we're gonna have to change this up a bit Instead, what we want to do is push that data, this little object here, this is an object, that piece of data, to the MongoDB uh, database, right? So we can do that. So we'll do um, uh, game.create, oops, wrong thing, game.create, and, and so the first piece of data that we want to put in here is actually, you know, the object that we want to send as a document into our database and save there, okay? So we can open that up just like this. And so the first thing, as you can see here, according to our little template that we have, is going to be a title, and then the next will be created, next width, next height, uh, next file name, and so on, right? So let's just go ahead and copy this because it's easier instead of typing it all out. So we can just put that here. That's our little template. So press tab to make that go forward if you need to. And then we can just change this to the values that were sent with the body of the, um, the form, right? Because this is our post request. We're retrieving data from the form, right? That's exactly what we're doing. We've already done this. If you don't know what I'm talking about, then just go ahead and watch, I believe, two episodes ago, okay? So now let's actually change this piece of data here to actually something that we can send to the database. So the title is going to be equal to data, which is going to be our object, of course, that we retrieved from our form, dot title, okay? And why is it dot title? Well, that's because if we go here, uh, what we named it, what we set the variable to, I guess you could say, is title, right? So that's how we access the value from this input um, tag here, okay? So that's why we do that. So next, we could just go on down the line. We could do data dot creator and so on right well, let's just keep doing this data dot width data dot height data dot file name and likewise we could also just do uh, instead of using, um, accessing this variable here uh, we could also do rec dot body dot you know title or whatever you want to do but of course it's more simpler just to access the data so we'll, we'll just do that so uh, thumbnail file just like that and that should be complete, right? But the last thing we need to do, of course, is have a callback function. And so that's going to be function, error, and then um, data, okay? So just like before, it's going to return an error. If there's an error, it's going to return data if it was successful, okay? So if there's an error, we can simply say console.log. There was a problem adding this book to the, or not book, sorry. Like I said, I get confused with the book and the game word sometimes because I'm working on a, a book uh, website. So there is a problem adding this game to the database, okay? And then else, if there's not an error, we could simply do uh, console.log game added to database, just like that. Okay, let's go down here, console.log. We'll just print out the value of the game just to make sure. Uh, data, just like that, okay? And that will be referring to this data, not this data, of course, because it's inside the scope of this one, so it knows that it's accessing that one. Anyway, so the last thing we want to do, of course, is redirect, but it's already doing that. So once it adds the piece of data to the database, hopefully that goes correctly. Um, it'll redirect us to the list page so we can see the result of the data that we just added to the page, okay? 
Uh, yeah, so let's try testing this out. It already, it already reloaded for us, so we can go ahead and do that. And let's just go ahead and add this uh, piece of data here for the second game. So we'll just do something real quick. There we go. So now we can do that. All right. So let's add um, a game. So add game. Of course, that still works good. And so the first thing we want to add is run three, which is the title. Creator is player zero three with his eight hundred uh, height is six hundred. Um, run three dot swf and then run three dot jpg. Okay, looks good to me. So we'll submit that and see what happens. And it works. Awesome. That's awesome. Okay. So if we expand this, we can see that it added the second game to the page, and then we successfully retrieved it from the database, of course, because if we reload here, now that data was saved in the database. That's really cool. Really awesome, as you can see here. It's very dynamic. I just love that. So if we go ahead and restart here, it's still going to actually show up, be on the, unlike before, because you know we're actually saving it to an external piece of storage here, a database. So that's really cool, as you can see. So that's one of the main benefits of having you know a database. That's really cool. Um, so yeah, that's how we do that. That's actually how we, you know, add games and then retrieve games from the database and then do all that with routes. It's actually very awesome. So that's actually it for this episode. I hope you understand a little more about how to do this stuff. Don't worry, we're going to get uh, more detailed in the future. Uh, next episode, we're going to make it so we can do uh, play game here and then it'll take us to the game that we want to play. Okay. It's already doing that, of course, because we're just, you know, doing slash, uh, we're doing all of this up here, but we're going to change it so it's a better system. You'll see. So anyway... Um, if you have any questions, just go ahead and uh, leave a comment in the comment section and I'll help you. Um, also, you can also um, you know look in the description for the Discord link for the Discord server. You can join that, hang out with us, ask questions, whatever you want to do. Make sure you do that. Um, and then lastly, um, we have a link here, which is going to be the, all of the code from today's episode. So yeah, make sure you check it out. Bookmark, for, bookmark it for future reference and all that fun stuff, okay? So yeah, if you liked the video, leave a like. If you want to see more, subscribe and peace.